Well, it's here. The season of Advent. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word Aventus, meaning coming. And so during Advent, we look forward to the coming of Christ. This is the four-week season of preparation. We are preparing to remember and celebrate the birth of Christ in Bethlehem those 2,023 years ago. There is some flexibility with calendars in the exact, on the exact year. But Dr. White will be here this weekend, so you can figure all that out because he's a historian on these type of things. And as we prepare for Christmas, we need to be on guard for the temptations that come along with the season. So we are going to take a break from the Ten Commandments for the next few weeks and look at the sins that often accompany the season. And so I'm going to read from you, read to you from 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. So put away all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn infants, along with the pure spiritual milk, that you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. The Christmas season is to be a season of celebration and rejoicing. It really is a season where we get to taste and see that the Lord is good. In Leviticus 23, God reveals to Moses the great festivals of the nation of Israel. And in the liturgical calendar of Israel, only one of the 365 days was set apart to afflict their souls. And that was the Day of Atonement. All of the rest of the calendar was filled with gratitude and celebrations. James 1, 17 tells us that every good and perfect gift is from God in heaven. And so we are seeking to be an abundant, we are seeking to be abundant and lavish in our giving. It is a time to imitate our Father in giving more than is, re- than is reasonable. And just in case you haven't noticed, God is not a skinflint when it comes to giving good gifts. Each of us have had countless breaths and so many masterpiece sunsets that you cannot even begin to remember them all. You live in the freest and richest nation that has existed to this point. You have been forgiven more sins than you want to remember. So, we ought to be a generous people. We are to give as much as we are given to. As, and as we give gift upon gift, there can come with all the gifts a temptation to look at what others are given and become envious. Peter, in his letter to the early church, gave a list of sins that we are to put off. Malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. And a sin that can creep in with all the wrapping paper is envy. My sister got more gifts than I did. My brother got what I wanted. My coworker got a bigger Christmas bonus. My husband just sat and drank eggnog as I did all the work and cooking. My wife only got me socks, a tie, and an ugly sweater. That family over there has a good godly family to spend holidays with, and my family is a drunk, angry mess. There are so many different opportunities to be envious. We can be tempted to want what others have received, to be discontent with what God has given you. Another word in the Bible that closely is closely associated with envy is covetousness. To covet is to have an excessive desire to possess what belongs to another, usually related to tangible items like property. Covetousness is an intense craving or a selfish desire. So maybe we didn't get away from the Ten Commandments after all. We just jumped to the last one, Exodus twenty seventeen: You shall not covet your neighbor's house. 
You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's and your sister's. That's a paraphrase that was not in Exodus. So, as we jump into the Advent season, the celebration of the Incarnation, let us prepare to fight off the temptation to envy. Let us be aware of our heart's willingness to covet. Let us rejoice with those who rejoice, like Romans 12, 15 tells us. But since we often want what God has given others and covet our neighbor's car, kitchen, or cash, let's kneel and confess these and our other sins. If you are able, please kneel with me and confess your sins. First quietly, then corporately praying the prayer you can find in your bulletin. <clears throat> 